this part of the year tends to be one of my favorites part of the year. It's not so much the festive season, but it's actually the fact that it's the year end. And usually the time that I really enjoy is the year end and during the summer. Because that gives me the chance to press pause, to stop and to look at what has been going on. To look at the things that have gone well, the things that they didn't go so well, the things that got to me, the things that I said that I wanted to do but I haven't managed to do. And yes, for sure, the beginning of a new new era is exciting. I usually get this sensation around springtime when the weather starts to open up. But for now, I want to spend this episode with you, being there with you to have a look at into what has happened in your life for you. For you to sit there and reflect a little bit and see what has been going on, what has gone well and what hasn't. And what are the things that really you can take away from this year, the learnings you've had from these years, so you can take them towards the new year and then use them as fuel but starting now starting a little bit earlier this is about being intentional being proactive and creating the space before the time comes it's about being ready it's about starting early welcome to another episode from inside treasures my name is Phoebus and I love to challenge myself and those around me for the purpose of growth this podcast is about helping you to heal to change and to grow This episode is about reviewing our year and setting ourselves up for the next year, 2023, to be the most phenomenal year you've ever had. Ideally for this episode to work really well for you, I would recommend just spending some time being by yourself with a cup of coffee, with a notepad and a pen, and just taking that time to just be with yourself and kind of reflect. There might be times that you feel like you need to pause and you might as well just go ahead and do that, just pause to create that space, that time for you to think and to write things down. But for the majority of this episode, I would recommend just writing things down as quickly as you can, as simply as you can, and use them as seeds. But primarily, it's not about you being fast. Primarily, it's about you listening within you and finding those answers and allowing those answers to come up. And as they come up, to register them and write them. And sometimes, yeah, you might need a little bit more time. That's fair enough. But go with what comes. Go with what comes up because this is your genuine desire. Before it gets filtered through the thoughts, through the whether I can or I can, I could talk in the previous episodes about beliefs and needs and all these things, just bring them together. Before all this starts to play out, notice, okay, that came up. Let me write it down. And then you can filter it later. Then you can see, okay, is this the thing? And then you can notice perhaps the things that are holding you back. But that's a different story. For now, it's about uncovering things. Before we start doing any of this work, I would like to invite you to just take a moment to pause within you. Take a moment to really relax, to really get present with what's happening. And yes, again, it needs to be in a safe environment. If you're out there and you don't feel like doing that, then keep it for another time. Perhaps listen to this episode in a different time. Starting out though, I'd like you to just place your hands on your lap. Take a nice breath in. And then slowly exhale. And either you can pick a point somewhere in the distance that you can focus your mind and your eyes. Or I would like to also invite you, if you want, to close your eyes. And for a few moments, just notice anything. Notice what is happening. You can notice my voice for sure, but notice what's happening within you. Notice the thoughts. Notice the emotions. Notice the tension in your body. Breathe in. Notice your breath. Breathe out. Breathing in. Breathing out. And as you exhale, noticing your breath, With every exhalation, allow yourself to relax, surrender. Surrendering your being, surrendering in this calmness that resides within you. Notice it. Notice the gap between the thoughts. Breathing in, and as you exhale, relaxing your shoulders, your neck. You carry a lot of tension there. If it helps, you can tense them a bit or lift them up, and then as you exhale, just allow them to drop. Allow the top part of your chest to ease. 
Take a few moments being present. Your breath is your anchor. Your breath is the gate to the present. Your breath can guide your attention, your focus. Your breath can help you relax. When you create this breath and it's a long but comfortable breath, you start to create this space within you. If your eyes were closed, allow them to open. If you are focusing on a point, just begin into normal looking around you. The first part of reviewing our year in order to empower us for the next year is to think for a few moments some things that you're grateful for. And you can start with this statement. I'm grateful for because I'm grateful for this year for being with my family because I'm really happy to see them grow. Think your things. What are you grateful for? From all this entire year, which we think, oh, it's one year, it's short. It's actually a very long time. And many, many things happen. And part of your mind might be concentrating the things that didn't work. But right now, I'd like you to focus on the things that did work, the things that made you happy. Did you go on a holiday? Was there a special moment that you had with someone? Did you grow in a specific way that was unexpected? Did you achieve something that you didn't expect? Was there a goal that you had? Was there a surprise in your life? Were there moments with your family? Were there moments by yourself? Where were they? The things that you are grateful for. It's been a year and you're still here. Are you grateful for that? Things might not be better than they were before, but you're here. You're still alive. You're still breathing. These are things to be grateful for too. Next, what I want you to focus on is about celebrating your wins. What has worked really well for you this year? And part of it might fall like right on the gratitude list, but like things that you've did, inputs that you put, that you felt there were successes for you. Maybe they didn't create the results that you expected, but it was a win. It was a win of growth. It was a win of certainty. It was a win within yourself. It just made you feel amazing for what you had achieved. And sometimes, yeah, maybe it didn't go as expected, but it was still progress. What do you feel you have progressed in your life in the past year that you would like to celebrate and acknowledge yourself for? Being humble, yet being acknowledging, celebrating ourselves for the efforts that we put in for the things that we have created. Spend a couple of moments to see what kind of wins did I have this year that I'm kind of tucking under the rug, but they're there. The things that I did, that's where I put my intention, my effort, and things worked. Maybe not perfect, but they worked. They helped me to grow, to change. If you got that, let's remain in this positive frame of mind, but at the same time, start to see the things that didn't really work that well. This is about maintaining a positive attitude towards the thing that challenged us this year. And the whole point is not about us blaming ourselves or blaming situations. Actually, from this positive stance, we can take ownership. So what was your greatest challenge this year? What was the thing that happened again and again, that you had to deal again and again, this one more time that really held you back, that really messed about with your emotions, that really messed about with your thoughts? What was that thing that happened again and again, that you said you didn't want this to happen again, yet it happened again, or you did it again? What was that main challenge that stopped you from creating 2022 to be the year that you wanted it? Whether that was consciously or unconsciously, to see it. Name it for you. Name it, see it, take ownership. What part did you play in this? Even if it's outside circumstances, what is my part in this? And then most importantly, what have you learned about yourself through this? What has been the main lesson? If you haven't, I suggest that you stop this, you pause and you think about 
This situation has been showing up again, again, again. What is the message? What am I learning? What do I need to learn? What did I learn but I forgot? What do I need to remind myself of? Now it's the time that we're turning the page from what happened this year and moving you to the next year. What I want you to do is think about your life. And in coaching, we have the wheel of life that has different areas of our lives. And while I describe the different categories, I want you to think, how would you score yourself? But most importantly, which one really sticks out for you? Which one do you feel that needs the most work for you? Because we can sit there and think about it and think about it and really take time to score. But I think we all know deep down what is the place that we need to place most of our attention towards. Because the things that work for us and things that don't and the things that stick out the most are the things that they don't. And that's what we did now. It was like paying attention to the things that do work and the things that don't work. So the wheel of life goes around this and the different versions of it. But one is your health and your body. How do you feel you're performing in the area for yourself? Is there something you can do? Hobbies, leisure, space, having fun. Your personal growth. How does it feel? Did I grow enough? Was there something I need to do to grow? Did something happen really, really quickly? Just, just getting a temperature gauge. Your work and career, your business. Did it work this year? Was there something that you wanted it to go in a certain way? Were you looking for change that didn't happen? Do you need something else? Or do you feel everything is going as it should be? Your relationships. Part of relationships for me is with ourselves. Did I spend enough time alone? Did I give enough self-loving and nurturing and kindness to myself? Do I need to develop a better relationship with myself? Valuing myself more, protecting myself more. You know the answer, I don't. With other people. Do I need to spend more time with other people? How is it? What's your temperature? Did I spend enough time with my family, with my, with my partner, with my children? Do I need to work on this? Just see where your gaps are. Your spirituality, that's another part. Is there something that I need or want to? Is this even part of my life? Do I want it to be? For some, it's not, it's not a thing. That's fine. But if there's something that you want to cultivate more of, is this your weakest spot? Could this be the thing that actually feeds into the rest of your life? That is the thing to notice with all the areas of the life. Some of them have more significance than others. Some of them tend to have more weight in our subjective experience. And some of them also, they lack a lot more than others, so they need more work. I'm pro-working on our, on our strengths, maintaining them, and keeping the momentum going, but also pro into looking into our weaknesses, working in that. Do you feel that you've contributed enough to other people? Is this something that resonates with you? So of all these areas that we, you heard me talk about, I want you to just, yeah, take a gauge. So which, which one do I feel that I need the most work at? And pick one or two. And then think, what was that thing that came up when, when you mentioned that, that I thought, hmm, I could do this or I could do that? We don't need to spend a long time into defining and developing our goals. We kind of know, deep down you know, we all know what it is that we need to do. We all know what we need to be focusing on. This is about creating that space for you to see it. That's it. To see it, notice it, and see what comes up. And decide, which one of these areas do I need to spend more time and energy in in order for my life to be better for me and for those around me? Now that you've identified which area of your life you feel that you need to put work on, I want you to look at something else. About your values. What do you value the most? What is that thing that you value the most in life? Is it your family? Is it your work? Is it the people you work with? Is it your relationships? What is your true alignment for you? What do you value the most? Think about your three top values. This can be a completely separate exercise to begin with, but just allow, take a moment, pause and think, what do I value the most in my life? Of these values, which one do you think 
you're out of alignment the most. Which one is it there you value it yet you're not showing up with yourself being there, being behind and living it? It's a hard part and will uncover shortcomings from you and that is okay. But the places that we're out of alignment usually cause us pain because we want one thing, we value one thing and we do another. Which one is it that you value the most and which one is it that you're out of alignment the most? And now think, how does that link to your wheel of life? How does that link to the different areas of your life? You might be wondering, why did I move into values when this is all about talking about goals and setting yourself up to succeed and also celebrating this year? The reason is because I find that values are an important aspect of setting our goals along with our purpose and vision, but I'm not going to go into this today. What I see is that we need to always know where we're standing. And the best way to take a temperature gauge of where you're standing is to have a look into your values and to have a look into where you haven't been showing up. And to see that, not out of context, but within the context of how has your year been within the context of the goals you want to set. Because if we want to set goals, if we want to set the intention for where we want to head, we have to understand where we're standing. And values play a tremendous role in how things play out, in how your goals will be achieved, in how you create those goals. Make sense? Perfect. A thing that I like to do when it comes to goals, and also think of when we're talking about goals, think of like also problems, because for some of us, we work differently. Some of us want a direction. Some of us want a goal that we want to hit. Some of us really like getting involved and trying to solve a problem in our life. That becomes a goal. It feels a bit different, but it is the same deep down. And personally, I prefer just solving solving problems. That's my thing. It's like, this is the problem. This is what I'm trying to resolve. And then trying to attack it, trying to hack it, try to, from different angles to resolve it. Of course, there's the goal behind that of how I would like things to be. Of course, they're shifting the problem focus into solution focus. But a lot of it is falling around falling in love around the problem that I have in my life and in what ways can I shift it in what ways can I change it even a little bit what change can I create of course this again this once I go past this what's behind this that's the thing that I'm after but that is that is a goal a different way of looking at goals before you set any goals though I want you to think of a theme for your year think of one word that you would like it to describe your next year An example for me has been perseverance, showing up, play bigger, be consistent. And that is just like to frame the year. I know that right now I need to play bigger. So next year my theme is play bigger, create more, be there more, amplify. That's another word that I like. What's your word for next year? Along with that, think of your intention for the year. What is the intention you want to have for this year? We're doing this so we can have a high level abstraction of our goals or the problem that we're trying to resolve. What is my intention for this year? Next year, this time, what would I have liked to have happened? That I came in with that attitude, with that presence, with that bringing this with me to create this. For this next part right now, I want you to move quickly and swiftly. Move with what comes up for you. Because deep down, you know what are the things that you want to focus. Deep down, you know what it is that you want to change. It's an amazing experience to sit down and think through all the areas of your lives and the differences and changes that you would like to create. But what happens more often than not is that we get overwhelmed. There's so many things. We don't know where to focus. It's very hard for us to start prioritizing. And then in the end, we just set these goals, which is, was a nice exercise, but we don't get to do any of them. And that is why I'm inviting you right now to do it quickly. Think of the areas that you chose earlier, the ones that they were lacking, the ones that you can do more. Think of your values. Think of your theme. Bring that into your awareness. And then allow yourself to think of three goals. Three things you could do this year that would really move the needle for you, that would really create a change and a difference for you. And that might be difficult, and that might take a long time. And you might think that they won't take a long time. 
choose the ones that are meaningful, allow them to come up. What are the three things I really would love to create next year? From these three things that came up to you, think which one really is the one goal? The one goal, the one thing that would really, if I did this, it would make such a tremendous, huge difference in your life. That by making that difference, it would make the rest of the goals pretty much irrelevant, easier, or unnecessary. What is the one thing that you truly crave and desire? What is the difference that you feel that you want and have to make in your life? For me, goals in the end come out of necessity. What is the thing that I really need to change in me, in my environment, in those that are around me? For that one goal now that you have in your mind, I want you to consider what is, what do I need? In order for me to achieve this, what do I need? Is there a resource that I need? In order for me to achieve this, what do I need? Why have I not achieved this till today? Is there anyone that I can ask help from? Is this specific enough? If it could be a little bit more specific, what could I add? What specifically would need to happen for me to know that this has come into life, the goal, the dream, whatever it was? What are the things that you're experiencing, seeing, hearing, feeling? Who's around you? Why is this important for you? Why is this important? What is the point? Where is this coming from? Sometimes you have like goals, oh, I want to make more money, and it comes from greed. It's wanting more, needing more, never being happy. And a lot of times it's, we need it because we, we, we want it for our family to be able to, to function in society. And even then, the different things, because I can say I want wealth, but I can say I want a thousand pounds a month or I want a million pounds a month. There's a difference in that. But actually what I'm looking for is financial freedom. And I don't need a million pounds a month. I just need less. Oh, okay. Dream big. Allow yourself to dream big, but also filter through reason. Without toning down your desire, without toning down and putting yourself down, but actually coming from that place of I'm reasoning my, within myself. This is what I want to create. This is the change, the difference. And this is why I want to create it. Notice that. Some of us think that the fact that we've sat down and done this work and put our goals down is enough for us to create the change. And yes, there are studies that say that the people who write down their goals, they're going to be more likely to achieve them. These things are true, but what I want you to consider is that this is not enough. This is the first step, and there are another 99 steps for you to take. The second step, is taking action. And part of that action is having that ability to breathe life into our goals, to breathe life into our dreams, to breathe life into resolving the problems that we have, to be able to see them as completely and done. When we can't even picture that in our mind, you can imagine how difficult it is to action against that. Because there's a lot of resistance, there are a lot of blocks. And yes, there will be blocks along your path. But it's having that ability for us to be able to see it, to visualize it, to experience it. And it's not always about being able to create pictures in our minds. But it's being able to get that knowing within us that this is possible. When you're able to shift in that space, that this is possible for you. That you deserve this. These are two huge elements, big elements that they take a part in creating our goals and creating our vision into a reality, into speaking our truth to the world and creating that truth for us. So do you really want this? The goal that you set, your ultimate goal, and the other two, do you really want this? Do you feel you deserve them? Think, feel, what would it be like if this was done? If this was complete? What would it look like? What would it feel like inside of you? What kind of experiences would you be having? What would it sound like if someone said, yeah, you've done this? 
What would it sound like to yourself if you said that I've done this? In your process and progress of achieving this goal, who would you need to be? Who do you need to become that you are and yet you aren't? What kind of things does this person do? This is an important element that I want you to associate yourself with. I will need to be more bold. I will need to be more out there. I will need to be speaking more to people. I will need to be more accepting, more loving, more caring. The qualities that you have, but perhaps you're not always showing up with them. Who do I need to be in order for me to have this goal? Who do I need to be in order for me to create this new reality? Step into this person. Perhaps you want to close your eyes and see them in front of you, if it's safe for you to do so. There's a whole exercise, but you can see them in front of you, build them up the way you want them to be, and then step into them. That is really powerful, and I often do that with my clients. It's about creating that space, creating that of which you are, and then showing up in the world from that place and putting yourself back back again and again and then going after your goal think of yourself think of your goal think of your obstacles and most of all think of the process that you have to go through people often forget and from going into the process with your mind you'll be able to see certain difficulties and see yourself overcome them that is really powerful before they even happen Your mind objects or tells you that there's a trap there. Within your mind, spend time. Not right now. Do it afterwards. Now that this is done, cool. Take a pause. Celebrate. This is amazing. You have a target to aim at. You have something that you have that is a little bit more concrete. Perhaps than what it was or perhaps it's just more clear. Perhaps you have more focus and direction. For you to be able to achieve these goals, particularly your first one, your your spear, the tip of the spear, what specific steps do you need to take? What do you need to give up? And from these steps, which ones are you truly, really committed into taking? I might want to get fit, but I'm not willing to give up waking up early in the morning. I want to stay in bed. Well, that's going to get in my way. But I could do it at 10 o'clock. Cool. But I don't really like running. I prefer swimming. Cool. Am I committed into going swimming at 10 o'clock? Being able to see, because right to say for me, oh, I want to start, I want to get fit, I'm going to go out, and I'm going to start running and been doing all this, 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 and that, but actually I don't like running. Am I committed? Maybe I don't like it, but am I committed to going to running? Okay, I am. Cool. What else will I need to give up? Okay, between 10 and 11, I need to give that up. Think of them for you, with this goal that you have in mind. What's your commitment behind it? From that commitment, what could really stop you from achieving this on your own? Maybe you know that you get complacent. Maybe you know that week one, week two, you'll do this running and then you'll stop. Do you need someone around you to help you with that? Do you need to be running with somebody else? Do you need a personal trainer? This is an example on the fitness. But you can apply this. Oh, I need a mentor in business. Oh, I need a coach. Oh, I need this thing has been bothering me for years. I need to do some therapy. I need to have some healing done before I can keep going. Think about these things because they'll show up. And yes, not always necessarily do we have to get those things. Sometimes we can just, just move along, keep acting, keep doing what you need to do. But not everyone is capable. And we're meeting with this resistance. And yes, it's making us stronger, but it's also making our life a lot lot harder than it needs to be. Cool. We're done. Yeah. So it's been about 30 minutes. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed the process. I hope you enjoyed being here with yourself, just reflecting, seeing what's been happening. Remember, in order for us to go where we need to go, first we need to understand where we're at. And that is why part of it is seeing what has happened this year, celebrating those parts of your life and actually taking the time instead of putting things under the rug and saying, oh, it was a bad year, it didn't do much. It's actually stepping into that and saying, yes, 
There were good moments and bad moments, and guess what? This is life. Within a week, every week I have an accountability meeting. Every week I say, it had its highs, it had its lows, it had its highs, it has its lows. It's very rarely that things go really, really well all the time or really, really bad all the time. Usually there's this variation. Take ownership in that. Be happy about that. Celebrate the good things. Acknowledge the ones that they're there, that they've dragged you down. Look through your life to see where the gaps are that you can start filling up so your life is not collapsing. Work on your weaknesses and even progress with your strengths for sure. It's not we're going to work on the weakness and completely forget the strength, but the strength needs a lot less momentum. It needs a lot less action usually. Well, we already are used to having that in our lives. It's the parts of our life that we need to work with. And see how that has to do with you being aligned with your values. Actually, these areas of my life that they're not working, is this something that is one of my main values that I'm completely not in alignment with, that I'm not showing up for? More often than not, you'll find that there is something there that you need to adjust for you. Have a theme on a high level. Think of your year as a theme, so it's nicely and easily abstracted. Bring an intention of the thing that you want to create for the next year. Keep your goals simple and loose. Keep your process concrete yet loose enough for you to be able to change and shift. Because if I think that in order for me to get this outcome, I need to do this A, B, C, it gives me a path. But guess what? It also closes down on possibilities. It closes down that creative power of the mind that says, oh, I could actually do this in a different way because I've said, no, I need to do this and do this and this and show up every day doing the same thing. Be creative, be playful. And like I said, your goal might just be resolving a problem. It might be attacking a problem. Know what it would look like for you if that problem was resolved. That's the goal behind the goal. That's where you're trying to get to. And this problem is getting in your way. It's the obstacle that gets in the way. We can lighten it up. Lighten your language up around it. Find ways in order for you to go along with them. To just create that difference. Start being the person that you want to be. No matter how difficult it might be at times. Stepping into the person. Being you. It's about being you. Having those qualities that which you have, yet somehow they're not always showing up where you need them. Bring those qualities along and then notice how, because you change how you, who you're being and you're changing the things that you're doing, how those pour into your life. And also, lastly, yes, go all out for it, but don't be super attached that it has to work and be this specific way. Because in life, many times, we think we need to end up in point A and we end up in point B. And it's knowing how to be okay with that because, again, it's where we need to be. Taking trust and surrendering, but at the same time putting in effort and doing the things that we want. And sharing this, not only for ourselves, but also for the greater good. Contributing to those around us. Remember when we talked about needs, the greatest way for you to find fulfillment and joy is to align the goals that you have in service of yourself and other people. This is a process that I really enjoy doing for myself and also taking other people along the journey. I find it like a very valuable process. And for that reason, it came to me, well, it's Christmas, it'd be nice to actually help some of you that you're listening to this go along this journey into a one-to-one session. I know that like this will help you as an episode to do that yourself, but there's a different thing that happens when we're in conversation. There's a different depth that we can go. So if this sounds meaningful to you and this is something that you would like to do into one-to-one basis, I have some space at the beginning of January, two spaces actually, to create that space for us to be together. So if this process is something that you would like to take yourself through with me, I'd love to serve you. I'd love to be there. There's no commitment. There's no obligation. There's no fee for that. If you find that along the way, actually, yes, you could use my help. We can go into that discussion. But for now, this is all about the process. You saw how it was. It's about looking at the year, how it happened the past year and creating this new year ahead of us. 
this is all we put our attention to. Your goals, your obstacles, your vision, and more particularly, you. So if this is of interest to you, send me an email at podcast.insidetreasures.com or reach out to me on Instagram at Inside Treasures. I'm here to help you heal, change, and grow. If there's something that resonated with you, something that you need help with along your goals, along your the whole exercise that we did today, give me a shout at podcast.insidetreasures.com. If you have feedback that you would like to share with me, send me. Because this tends to be a monologue, and I love to hear about what you experience through listening to this podcast. And that gives me more strength and courage. It gives me more fuel for me to keep doing what I'm doing, to give you more and this year has been more of a quiet year because I was focusing on, on, on different things. But for the next year, I'm looking into creating more of the podcast, giving more value to you. So the more that I hear this is impacting and affecting your life, of course, the more it's going to inspire me to create more. So if you feel like reaching out, like I said, use my email or contact me on Instagram at Inside Treasures. If you found any of these messages useful and insightful, share them with your friends and loved ones. Allow the messages and wisdom to spread to those around you because you never know how it will impact them. If you would like to create a donation towards this podcast, go to my website at insidetreasures.com and there's a button right at the top that says donate and you can make your donation. Thank you for tuning in to another episode for Inside Treasures. My name is Fibus and until next time, my friend, let peace guide your life, let love guide your heart and reason guide your thoughts.